so let's get back to the eighth house so with taurus being the full moon and taurus being in your eighth house what's the eighth house about so the eighth house is called the i transform right and it's ruled by scorpio so it's where you you learn about other people's values um sex money other people's money you have intimate intimacy uh stuff going on in here and um it's about death and rebirth right it's about the hidden the occult um and it's it's where it's where your karmic ancestry is so if you believe in karma uh, or you believe in past lives or life between life um, this is where that ancestry karma stuff comes so it's about paying debt as well so if you've been working in this house <clears throat> when the full moon comes in this house and it being in Taurus this tells me that it's time to let go of some things right it's time to like move forward and let go of some things and I explain it this way if you've never seen me uh, what happens is with within our whole self our higher self our whole being we can accept and have unlimited amounts of energy run through us but in this physical state in this realm on this or in this realm uh in this vibration we can only have so much energy running through us because it's this physical state right so what happens is if we if we keep what no longer serves us if we haven't gotten through some things and some things we don't even realize we've kept for so long because it was a trauma from way back right and we've sort of moved on and we've sort of kept living life but we still have that thing that we keep so if it's if it's something that no longer serves you someone that no longer serves you if it's any of that you're keeping that in your energetic field and when you do that you can only have so much energy run through you so you're keeping yourself from your blessings because you have all these other experiences all these other possessions and things and people and situations that want to come to you but they they can't get through because you're holding on to this other stuff so this is what the full moon in Taurus is telling me that it's time to let go it's time to let go of some things maybe some debt you're finishing up uh, maybe you know understanding other people's values and your values where that correlates um, understanding your placement and your belief system about um, you know just because someone else values something doesn't mean I have to value that and and then really understanding this person that came into my life or these things that came into my life why they came in right so this is telling me with uh, the full moon in your eighth house this is what's going to be going on in that day now with the sun and the moon and neptune trining neptune is the protector neptune is um the faded and divine stuff neptune is the um he neptune helps it's the hidden help that you don't realize you're getting right and so with this trine whatever's going on between the sun and the moon um or especially the moon and neptune neptune is going to protect you it's going to help you release and see a better way and it's going it could bring you gifts it could bring you possessions it could bring you love it could bring you situations right but it is about um so if you have to let go of someone or have to let go of something so let me say this you don't have to do anything you have free will right but if you're wanting to get to those blessings if you're wanting to get to those things that you called to you sometimes you have to let go of things so that your energetic field can take them in so if you're wanting to get to those things that you've tried to create from your head and imagine have a passion for then this is going to help Neptune is really going to help and Neptune is going to bless you with things as well so I feel like when I'm looking at this trine I'm seeing that not only are you letting go but you could possibly be getting um physical stuff physical manifestation because Taurus is in there so physical stuff coming from your eighth house that's other people's money right that's um yeah that's other people's money and so I feel like it because it's the eighth house it's transformative so it will transform you you'll go into this new phase of life when this happens okay so in your second house you know the sun is your second house the sun is in your second house and you know the second house is about possession so this is all about you guys really changing into this new phase for when I'm looking at this trine I'm seeing that you're really changing into this new phase of life which it's about time because like I said you guys had a hard year so uh well over a year it was like 13 months that's a long time so um 
with Neptune being in your sixth house, your sixth house is about your daily routine. Your sixth house is about your serving others. Your sixth house is about how you incorporate the way that you see that yourself in the world into your daily life, right? And so with your eighth, your second, and your sixth lit up, um, I see that your, your life is really changing. And I see that you're going to get po possessions and situations and people coming into your life where you're transforming this okay so the full moon is going to be in effect for you for about two weeks so just because you don't get something on that one day excuse me doesn't mean you won't get it in the next two weeks but this is sort of what you're going to be working through because remember as you let go of things you you have more room in your energetic field for your blessings to come in right so Congratulations. It's time for a lot of you. I know that you have something that's really, really um, hmm, changing for you in relationships. So I'm sending you lots of love and light with that. So let's get started with these cards. So what I've done is I've changed it up because you don't have that Gemini side. So what I've done is um, this is your emotional state and this is like things that can come in or things that can happen that are faded, right? And then this is your physical state and advice from spirit, <clears throat> like what actions to take, what things to do, what's going to be coming in as well, right? And so this one is your romance and this is your financial card. Okay, so this is your past, present, and future. And by future, I mean like the end of November into December, and it could be beyond that. It just kind of depends on you and your aspect, right? You have choices, you have your conscious, uh, you have free will, right? So in your recent past or in your past, you had, this is, this was your like emotional state and things that you were doing and feeling, uh, you have the hermit. So it was like you got really centered because I kind of feel like you were doing what the Sagis did was like, I know this stuff to be true. So why isn't it working? And everything that I do is not helping. And I don't know what to do anymore. Right. And so at some point it, you ran yourself ragged and I can see you like running, running, running. And then finally just gave up. Right. And got very centered. And then you realized because when you get centered is when you get the news or when you get the alignment or when you get like the inspiration of like oh this is what i'm supposed to do or this is what's supposed to happen or maybe this is why it didn't happen right that's what i feel like went on in your recent past where you just got centered tired and centered and then you had this epiphany right and so what happened was you had new beginnings and they were very passionate and they started going and you're like yes yes i'm doing it i'm doing it, i'm doing right and so um, listen, you guys know, if you've seen me before, wands do not fail at anything that they want to do. They just have to want to do it. So I felt like you started getting some things. I felt like you, um, like even I can see where the last 13 months where you were like, I'm still believing. I still know this works, even though it's been so hard. Maybe it's for this reason. Maybe it's for that reason. But when this started, you were like, yes, yes. And so now I, I feel like you had new beginnings, like maybe even in this last month, um, where it's very passionate and it does, let me just say, as long as you keep at it, it's going to build something good. Okay. Or it's going to build something solid. It's not going to fail. All right. So I'll say that. So in your present, this is you now and now to me is now to the next two weeks. Um, so you have the four coins. So this person has worked very, very hard for what they have, right? This is what they have. And they have the key to their box, right? And so they are willing to sometimes share that, but they have ulterior motives, right? So when I get this card, it's almost like uh, Spirit saying, be very aware of why you're helping people, right? Plus, with your eighth house being activated, I feel like you might get help from people, even though you don't really want help. Like you don't really go asking for help. You're, you're pretty self-sufficient. So <clears throat> I feel like you might have these, um, people or somebody come in and help you with a project or in a situation or with an issue. Um, and so if that happens, just be aware of why they would be doing it, right? Like, I'm not saying to be, to, to get all like overly anxious about it and, and 
really critical and say, oh, why are they doing this? No, I'm just saying if there's an understanding of I help you, you help me, then that's great, right? That's what this four coins is about. This four coins is about you having these things that you've worked so hard for and keeping a hold of them. And we understand that the flow of money has to go back and forth plus or the energy of money has to go back and forth and and love relationships and family relationships. It's all a back and forth. It's back and forth and back and forth. And so they're just saying, stay in that flow of back and forth, right? So their advice is, so I see this two ways because you have the eight of wands in your now, which is now to the two weeks. So their advice is and the things that are coming to you, whatever you've started and wherever you're at, it's going to go fast. I see things happening fast for you. That's what the eight of wands to me is. For others of you, if there's a trip you're trying to take or if there's something that you've been really trying to get through, I have come have to have come to fruition. It looks like you're going to be taking a trip. It could be a day trip. Usually this means a long trip, but it could be a day trip. But whatever this is, it's sort of helping you in the situation. And for some of you, I feel like you've been trying. So some of you, I do feel like you have been traveling, but I feel like there's, there's, if, if you've been traveling a lot, this is about you moving fast. This is about your projects moving fast, about your relationships moving fast, about things moving fast for you. Okay. So I feel like you'll be doing that in like the next two weeks. So <clears throat> in your, um, this is your emotional state and this is your future. So like the end of November into December, you have the strength card. So you're going to be dealing with, with all these things coming about and things actually happening fast and, and because they hadn't for so long and now they're actually doing it, you're going to have to come or you're going to be thinking about and dealing with coming to a place where, well, you do this beautifully to a place where you um, are making decisions and dealing with groups and dealing with, you know, your loved one or dealing with your family or whatever, dealing with people where you're trying to say, we can both have something good come out of this, right? And so you're actually really good at this, but I feel like this is what you'll be doing in the next, uh, like at the latter half is where you'll be trying to understand or trying to be able to communicate how it would be good for everyone involved, right? And so you're going to have to intuitively work in that space where you're like, okay, this is good for me and this is good for them, or this is good for me and this is good for him, or this is good for me and this is good for her. And so how do I communicate that where we all see it, right? That's what I feel like will will be going on in the latter half. And the reason is because you have the lovers. And so the lovers to me doesn't necessarily have to be romantic. It could be if your romantic partner is in like your business with you or your romantic partner is in your projects with you. I mean, this could be why you're dealing with them in here, but I have this here. This is your romance card. So this is a, to me, when it's not romantic, it's about um, soulmates. It's about two people coming together and um, learning lessons. And then once that lesson is learned, they have a 50% and you've got a 50% shot at staying or leaving, right? It's, it's like when a person, when this type of person comes in, when your soulmate comes in and they don't have to be romantic, it's up to you. I mean, it, th when this person comes in, um, and it's a soulmate, it's about them helping you grow your soul in a way that it wouldn't have been grown any other way with any other person. It's just them, right? And you do the same to them. So that's why it's a 50-50 to me. So I feel like at the end of November and into December, you're going to be dealing with this person. So, and I feel like this is where this comes in, where you're trying to help that person see and yourself see, is this really good for both of us? And if it is, let's come to some sort of agreement. And I feel like this can be in your business. I feel like this can be in your work. I feel like this can be um, in your family. Um, so it doesn't just have to be, I don't feel like if it's romance, it's because you're a romantic partner and you have a project together or you have business together or you work together. That's what I feel like, but that's what you'll be dealing with sort of at the end of November and into December. Okay. So this is your romance card. Um, so 
this is a three of swords this is about separation from a loved one about separation right so the three of swords is telling me in the month of november you're going to be dealing with separation it doesn't have to be a bad thing right because i mean don't some of you will be like no i don't want to break up no that's not what this is for some of you for some of you it is for some of you it's not because i feel like if you have to travel or if you if something comes up like a family matter comes up and you have to leave your partner that's what the separation is right and so you get sad because you're separated right but th that could be that for some of you for others of you this really is maybe because you have to move maybe because you got a new job and you have to leave your partner um that you do have to live somewhere else so i do feel like the separation's coming up for you guys i feel like you'll be dealing with that in the month of november but for others of you um that are single i see this where you're finally letting go of someone and it it doesn't feel good and maybe you tried many times and maybe you've been really patient, but if I feel like you're finally letting go so that what no longer serves you so that you can have your blessings come in, right? So I'm sending you lots of love and light for you partners. Again, it could be because you're leaving to go somewhere else or they're leaving to go somewhere else. But um, for some of you, it does mean a breakup to me, okay? So, um, in your financial area, you have the temperance card. So I feel like, see this fire here? I feel like everything that you have that's passionate from here is going to continue to come down for you. Um, I feel like you're going to be financially, things are still going to continue to flow. Maybe that's why they were saying in this card that you have to remember not to just keep everything but continue in the flow because i feel like whatever you've been working on to get through is almost here i feel like you've gotten some of it but i feel like the big like contract or the big house or the big car or the big something is coming through in the month of november and so you'll be dealing with that and working that through in the month of november okay so um, this last card I'm going to turn over from the bottom of the deck. This is going to be your overall theme of what you'll be working through in the month of November. Oh yeah. So you've got the two of wands. So this is all about you making choices about which way you want to go in life. Okay. So in November, it looks like when these things are happening, this one, this one, this one, this one's already happened, but this one and this one, <clears throat> and this one it looks like you're going to have choices to make and sometimes we get stuck in the middle and don't want to make one of the choices because we're thinking we're going to miss out on the other choice but that's not what this is what they're saying is if you just put your energy and make that one choice <clears throat> pardon me if you put your energy in and make that one choice doesn't mean the other choice isn't going to come around and intersect it's just they're just saying because of space time here you have to make a choice and put your energy right or else you're going to stay stuck in the middle and then nothing happens 